Today, I'm going to walk you through creating a temporal workflow for a sample e-commerce order fulfillment type use case. I'm going to do this in Temporal's TypeScript SDK. Once we create the workflow, I'll show you some common failure scenarios and how Temporal handles those gracefully. Then I'll add some interactivity in the workflow with a human in the loop scenario and also add some asynchronous logic to show you how Temporal can handle complex use cases with ease. I've gone and created three temporal activities with mocked API calls in them, process payment, reserve inventory, and deliver order. Now I just need to code them up in my temporal workflow, order fulfill workflow, so they execute in sequence. Okay, I've coded up my uh, basic order fulfillment workflow, three sequential steps, process payment, reserve inventory, deliver order, and returning that result. Let's, let's run it. But first, um, I need to start my temporal worker. This is the process that will execute this workflow and its activities. And with our worker running, let's run our first workflow. Now it's going to take a few seconds because I've introduced some artificial delays. Um, and there it is. The order has been fulfilled. Payment was processed for two items. The inventory was reserved for two items and the order was delivered for two items. The data that I'm feeding to this workflow is some order data. I'll show you that now. It looks like we're buying shoes today. So there's two different items. And so let's look at our workflow execution in the temporal UI. This was the workflow we ran. And it looks like it indeed completed successfully. It took three seconds because of my artificial delays that I introduced. There is some input data. You can see that the shoes came in and also some credit card data and uh, a successful result of the order being fulfilled. Now, if you look at the timeline view of the event history, you can see that process payment ran, reserve inventory ran, and deliver order ran. So our workflow successfully ran in sequence, just like we wanted it to. And if we look at the compact view of the event history, we can see the details behind the activities that ran. So for example, I'll expand process payment, and you can actually see all of the data that went into that API call, that activity, and the result of it as well. So really great for troubleshooting what happened within your workflows. Okay, and back to the code. Earlier, I started a worker to handle executing this workflow. Um, but in practice, people run fleets of workers in a highly available setup. So let's put Temporal's durability to the test by bringing up another worker for a total of two. Now I have two workers running, I'm going to run another workflow, and this time I'm going to bring down the worker that's executing that workflow to see what happens. All right, running this workflow, you should see one of these, there it is, I'm going to stop that worker. Even though I stopped the worker on the left while it was executing my workflow, the worker on the right actually took over the execution of the workflow, and if we go back, we can see that the workflow completed successfully. Let's look at our workflow in the UI to see what that looks like. So it just looks like the other happy path workflow execution we ran previously. If we look at the event history, we can see that there is a delay between the first two activities running and the final deliver order step. And that was the time where we brought down our first worker and the second worker picked up the slack and was able to complete the workflow. So temporal workflows are durable beyond any individual worker. But what happens if I run another workflow and bring down this remaining worker? I'm going to start another workflow and bring that worker down. Simulating if a server went down, the server that was running your workers, or entire infrastructure failure, perhaps a cloud region went down momentarily. Let's look at the workflow in the UI. All right, you can see the workflow is still running. And if I go down to the timeline, you can see that the process payment step ran successfully, but we lost our worker before it had the chance to finish executing the workflow. So let's go back to the code and bring our worker back up. And you can see pretty much instantly it is finishing execution of the workflow. The workflow succeeded. And if I go back to the UI, you'll see that the workflow completed. So even if you lose all of your workers due to infrastructure downtime or some other catastrophic event, once your workers come back up, these workflows are going to proceed. Another common failure scenario is API downtime. No API is up 100% of the time. Best case scenario, APIs will be some number of nines of availability. 
So let's test what happens if Temporal encounters API downtime, maybe in one of these activities and see how it recovers, see how it's durable in the face of that API downtime. Inside my reserve inventory activity, I have some code that will simulate API downtime for almost a minute and then it will come back up again. Hopefully the Temporal workflow can complete. Okay, I'll start a new workflow execution and let's check in the UI to see how our workflow is doing. All right, you see our workflow is running. And if we go down to the event history, we see a big red angry reserve inventory. And you can see that the reserve inventory activity has retried four times. And once it gets to the fifth attempt, it's actually gonna succeed because that's what my code will make it do to simulate some API downtime. If we go back up to the top of the workflow, you can see that now the workflow itself has completed. And sure, the reserve inventory activity took quite a while to finish and, and quite a few attempts. In fact, it took five attempts, but Temporal has powerful and customizable retry policies. And so Temporal is durable in the face of API downtime. The next failure scenario I'll show you is an unrecoverable error. Sometimes business transactions fail in an unrecoverable way. So I'm not talking about API downtime that's temporary, but instead some kind of business reason why the order can't complete. In fact, in my example, I'm going to submit invalid payment information and let's see how the workflow deals with it. So back to my workflow input, you can see that I have some credit card information. What if I was to change the expiry to be in the past? So December, 2023 and run this workflow. You can see we encountered some kind of error. Let's look at it in the UI. Sure enough, the order failed. And if we look at the reason, we can see that an activity failed. It was the payment activity and it failed because of credit card expired or specifically credit card expired exception. So why did this particular failure not retry like the API downtime scenario? Obviously we don't want to retry an expired credit card, but what is it about our temporal workflow that helped temporal know that we didn't want to retry? Now, there are a few ways to specify that you do not want a particular activity or exception to cause retries. In my particular case, I've done so at the workflow level. I have a non-retriable error type specified on my activities. And so if a credit card expired exception comes in, Temporal knows not to retry that particular kind of exception. And so this is how you would handle an unrecoverable failure in Temporal. Okay, I better fix up that invalid credit card data and comment out my API downtime. Okay, the final failure I'll show you is what happens if there's a bug in the Temporal workflow itself? In other words, what happens if the workflow gets into a state where it cannot proceed? To answer that question, I'm going to introduce a very rudimentary bug into my workflow and let's see how Temporal handles it. There it is. The simplest kind of error I could throw from TypeScript. Let's run the workflow. We can see that it's still running. And if we scroll down, we see a lot of red this time. There is indeed a workflow task failed with workflow bug. So it's actually seen that the workflow cannot proceed due to this error and it's given me enough information to actually go in and fix this bug. So going back to my code, I see that line 15 is my bug. Um, if only real life was this easy, real life bug fixing. But there's that bug fixed and now I've saved it. Let's go back to the UI and see how Temporal handles the recovery. And there you have it, the workflow was able to recover. Uh, as you can see, process payment and reserve inventory happened. The workflow encountered the bug, I fixed the bug, that's this kind of dead space in between here. And then the workflow was able to proceed and complete. And so Temporal is durable in the face of workflow bugs themselves. So I showed you a range of failure scenarios and how Temporal deals with those. Let's introduce some workflow interactivity. A reason you might want to interact with the workflow while it's running is let's say you have an order that comes in that's an anomaly. Let's say the order is extremely large or extremely strange for some reason. You might want a human to review that order and approve it explicitly before the order is able to proceed. So let's code that up. I've introduced a new activity called require approval and it's going to return true if an order is over $10,000. And so in our workflow, I'm going to introduce new logic that says if await require approval for that order, then await a condition 
that white song is approved, which is going to be a Boolean to be true. So let's define that Boolean is approved equals false right now. And so in other words, we need is approved to be true for workflows that require approval to proceed with the rest of the workflow. And so how are we going to flip is approved from false to true to unblock this condition? Well, we'll do that through the use of temporal signals, which is how you interact with running workflows. So what I've done is define a signal called approve order. And once that approve order signal comes in, it's going to run this handler here. And that handler's one job is to flip is approved from false to true, therefore unblocking this await condition here and allowing the order to proceed. If we look at my input data, you can see that I'm already ordering a thousand shoes, uh, which is going to put my order over $10,000 and trip up the require approval activity. So let's run the workflow and check on it in the UI. And you'll see that the workflow is running. And the result of require approval is true. And this has meant the workflow is actually going to sit here. And it's going to sit here running indefinitely without progressing. And that is because the only way to unblock this workflow is to send it an approve order signal. Something that's very cool about Temporal is that even though this workflow is blocked and literally sitting there with a blocking line of code, the worker is not processing this workflow at all until that approve order signal comes in. So Temporal can efficiently and easily support long running workflows. One more thing I'll show you before I approve the workflow is that if you click on call stack here, you're going to see the exact line of code that this workflow is blocking on. But let's send an approve order signal to our workflow. And there it is, pretty much instantly the workflow unblocked because the condition was met, the signal was sent to the workflow, and it was able to complete. You can see this approve order signal came in and that unblocked the three activities that needed to run. Finally, let's increase the complexity of our workflow a little bit by introducing some asynchronous logic. It's probably bad customer service if an order comes in that requires approval and then sits there waiting for approval until the end of time. What if the approver never sees it or is never notified about that approval and the customer's order is hanging around forever? So let's introduce a race condition into our workflow to ensure that a customer's order isn't sitting there waiting for approval until the end of time. So I've introduced a race condition here between getting approval and 30 seconds timing out. In other words, this workflow now has 30 seconds to receive approval, or it's going to throw a new application failure, which will fail the workflow. Let's see this workflow in action. You can see it's running. And if I go down here into the event history, you now see that there's a 30 second timer. Now I could signal this workflow with approval and that would unblock the workflow, invalidate the timer and the workflow would complete. But I may just wait for this workflow to finish or fail because the timer has fired. In fact, let's see if I can race this workflow. Approve, oh, nope, the timer happened first. <laughs> I guess the workflow won and it has indeed failed because 30 seconds expired and I didn't approve it in time. So to recap, I showed you how Temporal is durable in the face of a number of different failures. And I also introduced some interactivity into my workflow to show just how simple that can be to code. Thank you for watching.